While we hopefully remember the basic kinematics from AP Physics 1, how do we analyze the motion of objects in AP Physics C? Kinematics in AP Physics C is fairly similar to the unit from AP Physics 1. For example, the basic properties and definitions of position, velocity, and acceleration all still hold and can be found in my past videos. In addition, the four main kinematic equations that are used for uniform acceleration situations are still extremely useful as well. The main difference when it comes to 1D kinematics in AP Physics C is that the acceleration does not have to be uniform. In other words, the position, velocity, and acceleration equations as functions of time could be anything at all. For this reason, we'll need to redefine some of our basic equations. To begin, we learn in AP Physics 1 that velocity was the rate of change of displacement and acceleration was the rate of change of velocity. Using the calculus equivalents, velocity will now be defined as the derivative of position with respect to time, and acceleration the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Using these same equations, we can also see that displacement can be calculated as the integral of velocity with respect to time, and velocity as the integral of acceleration. The other main difference will be how we mathematically represent these quantities in 2D and 3D. While we learned about the concept of vectors in AP Physics 1, the position, or R vector, velocity vector V, and acceleration vector A, will now be denoted using what's known as a vector notation. In this notation, the x, y, and z components of these quantities are written separately. This can either be done using brackets and commas, or using the unit vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat, where each one is a vector of magnitude 1 in the direction of the x, y, and z axes respectively. For example, this velocity vector here would represent a velocity with x component 5 meters per second, y component negative 3 meters per second, and a z component of 1 meters per second. And this position vector would represent a point in space positive 4 units in the x direction, 0 units in the y direction, and negative 2 units in the z direction. We can even use our new derivative and integral definitions on these vectors. Remembering that in kinematics with multiple dimensions like projectile motion, the components are completely independent, the velocity components given a position vector are simply the derivative of each component of the position, and likewise with acceleration. Similarly, each of these same components can be integrated to find velocity from acceleration, or displacement from velocity. Looking at these new equations, there really is nothing more than applying some calculus and vectors to the concepts we learned back in AP Physics 1. As long as you look at each of the components separately and become familiar with this new vector notation, you'll be extremely well prepared for test questions and future units that build off of these concepts. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about kinematics in 1, 2, and 3 dimensions.